Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper, and in this video, we're going to demonstrate to you how to navigate using astronomy as a guide. And I've got a very special guest with me and a very good friend, Brandon Stroop. Thank you for being with me. In this video, we're going to break it down for you how to navigate using not only the day sky, but the night sky. But before I begin, I want to hand it off to Brandon and let him tell you a little bit about his website and what his work is that he does. Well, uh... Astronomy Guide on is just a uh, website of mine that I kind of uses as an archive for my pictures, videos, time lapses, and such that I've done over the little bit of time I've been started with, with actual photography and stuff. It's pretty, it's a good little resource to check out. Uh, great pictures and stuff. I, I, I really enjoy it. Absolutely, and there's many good astronomy clubs that you can join, and they can help teach you a lot about astronomy. We just got done enjoying Bay's Mountain up there and Starfest, and that was really awesome. I had a great time. And we encourage you. Yeah, it's good for the family too. Good okay. family time. Um, to begin again with, I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give some points out, and I'm going to let Brandon break it down for you uh, because he's very knowledgeable on this stuff. Is I think one of the first ones that would stick out to people would be the transit from the sun from the east to west. Right. Exactly. As most people know, um, sun rises in the east and sets in the west. So I mean, if you can figure out where the sun rises and it, where it sets, or even just the sunrise period south, and that's perfect for your cardinal directions and learn figuring out exactly where, what direction you need to go, or whenever. Absolutely, things has things happen. Right, and not only that, but um, shadow transitions, uh, what most people would call the sundial effect. You know, I think that's good too. Right, exactly. Um, if you if you was to wake up uh, from being blacked out or something in the middle of the day and the sun's up ahead. You don't, above your head, you don't even know which direction it's going to be for at least 30 minutes to an hour. So you can actually use a stick or something in the ground or whatever. You can watch it for a little bit and figure out where the shadow's going. It, the shadow's going to go in the opposite direction of, of where the sun's going to go. So that's going to tell you what direction you're go, you need to go. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, um, I guess moving to the nighttime effect would be, um, I think the moon's one of the most you know, easiest examples for people to see, you know, not only for it being able to see it in the second part of the month in the daytime, but not right. only the first part of the month at night and its movement through the sky let you give it. Right, exactly, exactly. I mean, of course, right now, you know, this is new, new moon right now, so there is no moon for us right now. That's why it's so dark. But, um, yeah, obviously, you know, so the moon's going to act just like the sun. It's going to rise in the east and set in the west as well. So, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be the same thing pretty much when it comes to the moon. And... As throughout the month, it, you know, it works its way across the horizon. That's one thing that people right, definitely, definitely see. You know, either either end of the month, it's pretty amazing. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I guess something that I like to point out to my scouts, and that you know, a lot of people don't take much notice to, but it's the Great Bear Constellation, or what most people know is the smaller portion of it, the Big Dipper. Right. Uh, the Big Dipper is. Um is a great constellation or, or tourism technically for the Big Dipper um, because it, it's going to point towards Polaris which is your north star here in the northern hemisphere that that's what as soon as you find Polaris buddy you know where north is and so you know you're going to know all your directions any time of the night and uh, for us in the northern hemisphere Polaris is your true north it's your north star and the Big Dipper it um the, the two end stars of the uh, the, the, I get the bucket the bowl whatever it's actually going to point directly to Polaris you just go, I think it's about 20 degrees or maybe probably a little more than that, probably about 40 degrees off of the end of the Big Dipper um, bowl and that's going to be players. You're a bright star. Absolutely. And yeah. the Big Dipper, it um, all throughout the uh, 24 hours, it rotates around the players. All the stars rotate around players. We're truly blessed to be in the Northern Hemisphere for those of us because being yeah, circumpolar, we've got a free ticket to ride. Oh, yeah. Always got a point. Um, uh, fixing a constellation is something I think people really lost the ability to know constellations and I think that's something that should really come back. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, if you can find, 
some of the larger constellations. Uh, but the Great Bear is one, I think, the third largest constellation in the night sky. Yeah. And if you can find that and you can find the Big Dipper, then you're instantly going to have a navigation point. Um, what do you think about planets uh, on as far as navigating on the ecliptical plane? Well, if you, um, like, it, for instance, for us tonight, it's a new moon, so you and if you don't know how to find your uh, your Polaris for your directions or whatever, and uh, th there's no moon, you, if you watch the bright stars, most of the time you're very extremely bright stars. You're low magnitude, negative one, negative two, something like that magnitude stars. Um, they're most, most of the time going to be planets. I mean, all the time they're going to be planets unless it's like something like Cirrus or something, which is around a zero magnitude star. Uh, Nice uh, your planets are going to go, travel across what you call an ecliptic in the sky. That runs a, 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 essentially the exactly same as your moon or your sun. It goes from east to west with a little bit of an angle towards the north. So if you can, if you know where the planets are, you're also going to know. Well, if you know where the planets are, the directions are traveling, then you're going to know where your your directions are into. And and once again, you know, throughout the year different planets are always visible so where Saturn might be early in the spring we have Jupiter in the winter which is yeah. good because when it's freezing and there's nothing you can really exactly. see quickly you could see uh, Jupiter and uh, I believe three of its moons maybe four with just a small binocular set so right, I mean yeah. you know that most people would have that with them more than likely in a go bag yeah Jupiter Jupiter is one of your your uh, I, w I would have to say one of your second second to third bright star depending on the time of year it is a uh, planet not start uh, during the winter time, and then of course in the spring and summer you got Saturn. That's a which is relatively bright too, and you got Venus as well. That uh, it, it varies from being in the early evening sky to in the early morning sky. And and these are just some of the points you can use. There's so much we can do with astronomy. I mean, Brandon can tell you there's so many different things you can see in the sky to use as a guide. I and mean, this is just something really basic. I mean, this is something that. Uh, most people, when they begin astronomy, it's the first few things that stick out to them. Um, one thing I'd like to bring up to uh, everyone is the Venus transit. We just saw that not long ago, and that only happens, I believe, every 243 years. Is that right? Yes. Now, I've been talking about doing a video here on Seven Trumps Prepper Channel about the signs in the heavens in 2014 and 15 about the lunar tetrads, how significant it is. And not only that, we're going to do it at Latter Prime Ministries also, but I'd like to get your opinion on it. How significant do you think this is? Because, I mean, this we're talking generations before this happens again. Right. This is a unique situation uh, with these tetrads because they happen in a sequence of two years. Spring, fall, spring, fall, two years, and then it will happen again for several hundred years. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking like 300 years to 600 okay. years. Generations. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, and, and one thing that I think people miss is this one, th th this is not only rare, but this is the last set naturally occurring that we'll ever see. Oh, I mean, yeah. and, and not only that, but our grandchildren, great great grandchildren, and so on. Um, one thing that I'd like to ask uh, you is like, I think people don't really see how rare it is because where we have eclipses all the time, the light transitions, it's, it has to be perfectly set in motion. Wouldn't you agree? The, oh, the yeah. way that the lighting is. And oh yeah, the the angles and everything when it comes to eclipses are are constantly different. I mean, it's 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 rare when because you, you ain't got your partial eclipses, you got your total eclipses. I mean, you just uh, there's just all kinds of just different angles that can just change the the type of eclipse it is. Right. All together. I mean, that that's why to me. I mean, personally, you know, like we've talked before, going to do astronomy is that. Whether you know you look at it in a Bible sense or NASA or certain astro astronomy groups, I mean a lot of people's taking notice of this, and I think it's going to be something really significant that you know people should keep an eye on. But uh, Brandon, I thank you for being with me, and I hope these points help you if disaster strikes or if you ever get out and get lost and need to navigate, find your way back. This may save your life. So Brandon, thanks for being with me. Hey, no problem. And um, if if any of this stuff interests anybody, you know, look up your local astronomy club. Uh, just about every major town or even smaller towns, they most of them have one or there's one nearby within 20, 50 miles. Absolutely. And make sure to check out astronomyguy.net. 
for some of the awesome uh, time lapses and photography that Brandon took. Until we see you again, hope this has been a blessing to you, and have a most blessed day in your Oshawa name.